Brighton and Hove Albion are enjoying a beautiful and unexpected start to the 24-25 season. For a club of its size, eight points after match day four is a big feat, especially since they've played two of the big six, Manchester United and Arsenal. While many football fans are shocked by the great displays of this team, those that have been following the progress of Brighton see it as a result of hard work. The squad is host to an array of talent, and with a couple of big forgotten names returning from injury this season, it means they really will be a real threat this year. The current Brighton side is a result of great planning. Brighton is simply a footprint of how a football club should be run. As far back as 2022, Brighton and Hove Albion were already being referred to as one of the best teams in the league. Former Premier League defender Stephen Kelly said, Brighton were probably the better team overall and have been one of the best teams all season for the 22-23 season. Former Prem midfielder Nigel Rio Coca added, They have been one of my favourite teams to watch this season. The football they play, their approach and their attitude is just great to watch and it's what football fans want to see. Former Premier League and England striker Bobby Zamora also believes Brighton are probably the best run club in the world. Each season has been a success one way or another. I genuinely think it's one of the best run clubs in the world, he said. Bold statements for sure. Last season, Brighton had a lot of problems in the league, ranging from the absence of top players that left for big teams to injuries of their squad players, and this affected their season as they finished 11th. But, as succinctly stated by Guardiola, even at their lowest, they were one of the best teams in the league. I give a lot of credit because I know the opposition we face. Brighton have been struggling with a lot of absences this season, and even so, they still play with courage and never give up, and they will continue to do it, he said. As is evident, the world of football has been singing the praises of Brighton for a while now. So what are Brighton doing differently? How are they having success year in, year out? How did Brighton create a team that one of the best managers of all time, Pep Guardiola, is scared of playing against? Yes, Pep is scared of Brighton. Ahead of their fixture in April 2024, Pep had this to say. Tomorrow is one of the toughest games of the season, he declared. Brighton away, if you put in my calendar, is always one of the toughest ones for the way they play. The manager's preferred starting lineup, often 4 2 3 1, with Bart Verbruggen in the net, who's still proving himself as a reliable goalkeeper, fit for the Premier League, with Jason Steele still stealing some game time for himself at the moment. Pardon the pun. The defence has some decent depth, with Jack Hinshelwood starting at left back at the moment. But Purvis Estupinian is first choice when fit and available, and he's an excellent left-back who's been forgotten slightly due to some long-term injuries. Lewis Dunk is an important part of the squad, as he's not only captain, but is key in the build-up from the back, and can put in some excellent passes to get some assists, and he also doesn't mind scoring the odd goal. His centre-back partner is often Jan-Paul van Hecker, who is for sure showing himself to be a reliable, ball-playing centre-back. The cover for these two is primarily Igor Julio and Adam Webster. Not bad. Joel Veltman and Tariq Lamptey, when he's fit, are the right backs and they're also very solid and offer different things to the team. James Milner, at 38 years old, has been getting the nod in the early parts of the season next to Carlos Baleba in the more defensive midfield role who are proving very solid with Matt O'Reilly and Yasmin Ayari waiting to get some game time. Karu Mitoma has been a staple for the Brighton boys on the left wing, with new signing Yakuba Minta getting regular starts on the right side. Simon Adingra can play either side, and these three will likely be sharing the available minutes. Jao Pedro has been starting in the number 10 role and is the shining light in this squad and one of their main shows of quality. They definitely want to keep hold of him in the coming transfer windows. He can also play up front, but with Welbeck in his current form and Evan Ferguson coming back from injury, who can also offer lots of goals, Pedro will likely stay in the number 10. Also coming back from injury is the wonder kid Julio Enciso, who could be a world-class player in a few years. And people have been forgetting Solly March, who it's fair to say, is an absolute baller and who can play on either wings and as a number 10. 
He's also returning from a long-term injury that's had him out of action for about 12 months. When he gets some match fitness back, this Brighton squad could even step it up another gear. The transformation of Brighton started with the appointment of Graham Potter as manager in 2019. When Potter came in, he changed the way the team played and the ideology of the team totally. Although there was no immediate impact after his appointment, there were plenty of signs for fans to be optimistic about with Potter in charge of the club. For instance, in his first season, the club recorded their highest points and goals tally in the Premier League, amassing 41 points and scoring 39 while finishing in 15th, their joint highest finish with the 2017-18 season. In Potter's first two seasons in charge at Brighton, the club avoided relegation with 15th and 16th placed finishes, all while evolving the style of play and philosophy followed throughout the club. Under the Brighton manager before Potter, Hewton, Brighton played like other bottom half Premier League teams. They played more route one and hoofed the ball from the back for the striker than Glenn Murray to run and hopefully score a goal. Potter changed this style to a more fluid, play out the back philosophy. He gradually changed the style of play on the pitch away from that old style and made Brighton a team comfortable in possession and able to create lots of dangerous chances, a style of football called Potter ball by many Brighton fans. It is true that at the early stages Brighton weren't getting the results but the fans enjoyed the display and ultimately the club avoided relegation each year. One thing was sure, the blueprint of a team capable of achieving great things in the Premier League was being implanted by Potter. Finally, in Potter's third season in charge, the team clicked. Potter led Brighton to their highest ever points total, highest number of goals scored ever and highest top flight league position at the end of the season. Brighton finished ninth in the table with 51 points and scored 42 goals. Brighton did, however, lose many key players around this time. Ben White joined Arsenal, Kukurea left with his manager and joined Chelsea, Bissouma joined Spurs and many more. This is another reason why Brighton is so successful. Its financial return on some of their investments have been staggering. The most notable ones in recent years are Ben White, who was signed for free and sold on for £50 million, Kukurea, who was signed for £15 million and sold for £55 million, and of course, Moises Caicedo, who we will mention later on, was bought for £4.5 million and sold for £115 million. However, unfortunately for Potter, while these outward transfers were happening, the team wasn't really investing in new players. How then was the club able to keep achieving with this deteriorating team? Well, this was firstly thanks to the great insight of the directors at the club. Brighton have one of the best training complexes in England. In 2014, Brighton invested in a training complex in Lansing, which cost £20 million and includes 11 full and half-sized natural grass and artificial pitches, as well as a half-sized covered indoor pitch. This allows playing facilities to be available for the club's players and staff, no matter the weather conditions. These facilities allowed Potter to bring the best out of his players and to bring out new top players like Dan Byrne, Moises Caicedo, Joel Veltman and Leandro Trossard. Roberto De Zerbi replaced Potter at Brighton after he left for Chelsea in late 2022 for a whopping £20 million, another example of Brighton's financial genius. Like Potter, the Italian also plays beautiful football, probably even more beautiful than Potter's. In the words of Brighton chairman Tony Bloom, Roberto's teams play an exciting and courageous brand of football, and I'm confident his style and tactical approach will suit our existing squad superbly. One thing is for sure, the chairman replaced Potter with a similar manager. I think they're similar managers because both want to have possession of the ball and press high. Former Brighton player Alexis McAllister stated after a few games under Roberto, as expected, De Zerbi continued from where Potter left and performed incredibly well. Many even believe he did better than Potter. Who do you think was the better manager at Brighton, De Zerbi or Potter? Let us know in the comments section. When Roberto joined Brighton, the team was at a high point. No one thought any manager could take them above the heights that Potter had taken the team, but Roberto De Zerbi was beyond amazing at Brighton. Under his tutelage, Brighton weren't just playing possession football. In many games, they dominated completely. 
Such was Roberto's reign of havoc that not just Pep, but some of the other best managers in the league expressed their fear of playing against Brighton. Jurgen Klopp described him as very influential. Pushing through your ideas by changing what probably everyone at Brighton thought had worked out pretty well and still putting on your stamp is a really good job he did. You see the difference. They played potable, now they played Deserby ball, he said. Deserby had an immediate impact at Brighton. In his first six games in charge, he kept 70% possession in five matches. In two seasons, Roberto transformed Brighton into one of the best attacking sides in the league. In his first year in charge, September 22 to September 23, Brighton scored 76 goals, the third highest in the league. In his first season in charge, Brighton finished sixth, their highest ever finish in the league. He also took them to the FA Cup semi-final and their first ever European football qualification. Brighton performed well in Roberto's second season, but failed to reach the heights of his first season. At the end of the second season, De Zerbi left the team due to irreconcilable differences between him and the chairman, Tony Bloom, about how the team should be run. He was replaced in June with Fabian Herzler, who became the youngest permanent Premier League manager at 31. Like Potter and De Zerbi, once again, Brighton went for a manager with a dominant style of play. He has a style of play that aligns with how we want a Brighton and Hove Albion team to play, and I'm confident it is one our supporters will appreciate and enjoy, Brighton chairman Tony Bloom said. From the way the board at Brighton chooses their managers to the calibre of players they bring in, one thing is clear. The team is properly run. Those that say Brighton is the best run club in the league may just be right. The investment and recruitment in the team is just amazing and has paid off time and time again in the last four seasons. And with the great start they're having this season, surely better days are yet to come. Brighton kicked off their 24-25 season in great form. They thrashed Everton 3-0. Then they beat a rocky Man United 2-1. In match day three, they were unlucky to have drawn the match against Arsenal even though the sending off for Declan Rice was wrong, in our opinion. Let us know what you think down below. Brighton were very unlucky not to score again and win the game 2-1 against many people's title favourites for the season. If you want to see another video on Arsenal and their chances of finally winning the Prem this season, click on this video above and subscribe if you enjoy. Unfortunately for the Seagulls, the goals just didn't come against a resilient Ipswich town and the game ended goalless. So currently, Brighton sit in sixth position in the league table and remain unbeaten. One of the few teams left in Europe who can boast this. How far can this Brighton team realistically go this season?